Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be reviewing the Hellregal Defensive. This is the uh, tier 2 level 10 weapon for the assault class. You get the Hellregal at level 10 for the assault class and then if you get 300 more kills with the Hellregal and 25 landmine kills, you can then unlock the Hellregal Defensive. And I unlocked this weapon on the live stream, so I know it took about four hours to get those 25 landmine kills. You might be able to do it a little bit faster depending on how lucky you get. And a lot of luck is involved with the landmine kills. I recommend playing on Amien Conquest as you will have a lot of opportunities to place landmines at popular intersections throughout the city. It's narrow enough and choke pointy enough with enough vehicles that allow you to put those landmines down and tank drivers or jeep drivers will usually run over them. I actually ended up getting my last three landmine kills by blowing up the train behemoth at the end of the round, which was kind of exciting. Working towards this unlock was, I'm not gonna lie, a very unenjoyable process. It really forced me to play against my better judgment, basically do things that didn't make a lot of sense strategically or teamwork wise. Um, and I'm willing to bet that the person who had designed this assignment never actually completed it themselves because if they had, they probably would have changed it to be something like do a uh, thousand points or however many thousand points of damage with the AT mines. That way, uh, any damage you did to a vehicle would actually progress you towards the assignment rather than just getting kills with it. One thing you might think about trying but won't work for this assignment is setting off your AT mines with a grenade or handgun or by other means. Whatever you set off the mine with will actually count as the object that killed uh, the person. So if you set off the mine with your handgun, it's gonna count as a handgun kill uh, against a tank, which is funny, but uh, it's not gonna count towards the assignment. Now I'm hoping in this video, I can sort of give you an idea of whether or not you wanna progress towards unlocking this weapon. The standard Hellrigal, the Hellrigal factory is actually a very popular and easy to use weapon. I like it, it's very effective in many situations. It's got a 60 round drum magazine. The big difference between the Hellrigal Factory and the Hellrigal Defensive is that the Defensive has 120 rounds instead of those 60 rounds. So you really don't have to think about reloading this gun much at all. In fact, I would guess that most people don't even have to go through one reload before they get gunned down by somebody else. The other change is that you actually get uh, an optic on this weapon instead of just the Hellrigal's iron sights. You can put a little red dot on here, which may or may not be something that you want. And it also comes with a bipod in case you want to go prone and try and be a makeshift machine gunner. I found the bipod setup on this weapon borderline unusable. The muzzle velocity on the bullets are so slow that hitting any targets at further ranges really becomes highly ineffective. So I would just recommend not trying to kill people at further ranges at all. Plus your damage uh, on impact at those further ranges becomes borderline nothing. So you have to shoot for a long time, go through most of your ammo, and probably not even get the kill at further ranges. So the bipod is just sort of this weird addition to this weapon that I feel doesn't really have much of a purpose. Now the final difference between this weapon and the standard Hellregal, and I do mean final, there's really nothing else that's uh, majorly different, is the base recoil. You're gonna recoil significantly more with the Hellregal Defensive than you will with the Hellregal Factory. Maybe not while the weapon's bipoded, but as I just stated, there's not much point in using the bipoded mode of this gun. So expect to be less accurate with this weapon in general. In fact, I found that when I was both suppressed, standing up, and trying to hit a target at medium range while aiming down sights, this gun had just a ridiculous amount of recoil. It was unusable beyond a certain distance. And you're gonna have to keep that in mind. This really is a weapon that you're gonna use in mostly shotgun ranges. Uh, maybe you could push it a little bit further than you could with a shotgun, but not by much. So if you're a fan of shotguns, you might really see no point in using this weapon as you can kill generally more people and kill them faster with a pump action shotgun than you could the Hellregal Defensive. A lot of this beginning gameplay here is from TDM. I found that to be by far the most effective place to use the Hellregal Defensive. Um, and as soon as I went into conquest or operation style game modes, which I will have a little footage here at the end of the video, it became far less effective because 
I felt forced into medium range engagements or just stand up firefights where my enemies knew exactly where I was coming from even in close range. Where I was losing out firefights to automaticos and basically any shotgun I ran into. So uh, it was a very aggravating weapon to use. The benefit of using it in TDM is sort of the chaos factor. If you're a decent player in general, you can use the chaos to your advantage, sneak up behind people, flank them, and sort of get those close quarter kills. And I found it much more effective in TDM, but uh, in game modes where you don't have as many flanking opportunities, whether it's conquest or operations and player movements a little bit more predictable, and you have to go into stand up head on firefights, this gun is going to get you killed. Popping up the SimThick stats here, you can see that the 650 round per minute rate of fire is fairly respectable, doing 23 damage maximum in close range. You're going to be out damaging most, or rather all LMGs, and a little bit less than half of the assault weapons. Basically, you're not going to out damage any of the shotguns or the automatico. So uh, there's a good percentage of players in the game who are going to be more effective than you in CQB. Uh, based on these stats here. You can see the damage drops off to 13.5 at around 45 meters away. You're not really going to want to use this weapon at those ranges anyway because of the horrible accuracy and recoil. So uh, you just got to watch out for that. And then uh, it's got the exact same reload time at 3.75 as the base Hellry Gold. The reload is a little bit long, but it doesn't really matter because you're not gonna need to do it frequently. However, you do have to watch out for the overheating on this weapon, making sure you stop firing as soon as you get a kill, uh, burst firing even when necessary will keep this weapon from overheating. Um, and you can still use those 120 rounds pretty effectively. The overheating is not uh, as big of an issue as it sounds like. Most of the time, you're never going to need to hold down uh, that fire button to deal with a whole bunch of players. Um, it'll just put you in a situation where you're not going to have to do any reload or take any breaks in between kills. It can be really good when you get a nice flank off, and you should have seen in the beginning of the video there, I got like six or seven kills in a single flank like that, which is nice because I didn't have to reload or wait for the other enemies, but the the same time a lot of the players I was killing had their backs turned to me you know if any of them turned around uh, this wouldn't be the weapon that could deal with uh, uh, an up close firefight the shotgun might have been just as if not more effective in the same situation since it can kill in one shot in close quarters and will prevent my enemies from actually returning fire this gun your enemies are gonna get a few shots off at you and you're gonna can take a little bit of damage with each engagement moving forward so it might actually prevent you from killing more and more players. Now, as with pretty much all SMGs in the game, you can see here on the stats that you have a hip fire accuracy of 1.5. This is pretty decent, and you'll notice that I do hip fire a lot when players are really close to me. That's fine. When you're at point blank range, this weapon really isn't that bad, being able to just hip fire your opponents down. Again, the Automatico is probably your biggest and most common threat with the average assault player, and so uh, they'll be hip firing, you'll be hip firing, you're not going to get any advantage up against them. Now, to try and wrap up my thoughts on this weapon and the assignment, I think it's kind of one of the weaker ones from the, the level 10 tier 2. In fact, it's my least favorite weapon of the level 10 tier 2 weapons out there. It makes the least sense in terms of balance, and the assignment is just god awful. This is definitely a weapon and assignment combination that I feel was not tested very extensively or really thought out or balanced against other weapons in a meaningful way. The 120 rounds just isn't really that big of an upgrade for this weapon. The 60 rounds that the Hellregal has standard is more than enough for like 99% of situations you'll run into. Yeah, every now and then I'll run through uh, all 60 rounds and have to switch to a sidearm, but it's so uncommon and I can usually finish off or do something with my sidearm in the same period of time. So getting such a big hit to your recoil with this weapon makes no sense, in my opinion, to get that extra 60 rounds. <laughs> Again, the 60 rounds don't benefit you until you already go through your first 60 rounds, which you're not going to do, like most of the time. So uh, you're really putting yourself in a situation where you're like, ah, on those, uh, every now and then when I go on some crazy ass flank, I'll have some extra ammo to take care of people. And it's like, 
Is that even worth it? The red dot upgrade certainly isn't worth it in my opinion. And the bipod is something that I just never used. Or every time I tried using it, sitting still for that long got me shot in the head by like a sniper rifle or something. It just, it feels very weird. And the range that you're supposed to start using it at then, the bullets are traveling 380 meters per second. So you have to lead like crazy anyway. It's just such a ridiculously designed weapon. Um, and I think DICE really needs to either take another look at this gun or uh, it'll just be one of those weapons that's sort of forgotten among the other battlefield forgotten weapons because they're just not balanced properly or fun to play with. So that's my general consensus with this gun. Not particularly effective and certainly not fun to use. I would honestly recommend just avoiding this assignment in general unless you're a completionist like me and you want to get all the guns. If you want to check out my other level 10 tier 2 weapons, they'll all be linked in the video description for videos on each of those guns. As always, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.